time free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. And I know I can't sing, but hallelujah. I was just praying and that song came up in me. <laughs> And y'all know, I done told y'all a thousand and one times, Char, Siobhan Frett cannot sing. She couldn't sing when she was Char Siobhan Askew. <laughs> she still can't sing being Char Siobhan Frett. But on a serious note, y'all, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are free. Do you hear me? We are free. A lot of times people trying to bound us with their words, with their thinking, um, with their lifestyles, but we are free. Jesus did not die in vain. Hallelujah. He did not die in vain. His blood, there's still power in his blood. His blood would never, do you understand what never means? It would never, thank you, Jesus, lose its power. No matter what's going on around us, no matter who's doing what, no matter who's saying what, we are free. And I don't know about y'all, but when I think about free, I, my mind go to two places. One, jail, bondage, chains. Like Satan's using so much in this world to keep us bound. There are certain situations and circumstances. People say stuff over our lives and it's nonsense. Plead the blood of Jesus and keep it moving. And so yes, sometimes it takes a while because I used to say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I used to say, I am not poor. I am not poverty stricken. This is not all who I am. I used to have to tell myself that I would not not have driver's license. I would not not finish school. Like I had to talk to myself, y'all, and I had to encourage myself and I had to keep going. And it wasn't anything I did in particular. It's because of the God I serve. I had to... I had to believe. I had to believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's not to say I'm going to go and jet ski or get on a plane or something. I'm saying whatever is in God's will, no matter how much of a hurdle, a trial, or a tribulation, or what the storm looks like, God can and will see me through. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know who needs to hear it, Lord, but I'm going to keep talking. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Listen to me. We are in the last days, people. And the Bible is clear. In the last day, people will be lover of themselves. Do you understand what that means? That means that whatever they want to do, however they want to do, when they want to do it, they're going to do it. And guess what? Thank you, Jesus. It could inconvenience you. It could hurt your feelings. It could ruin your day, but God, and I know personally, Lord, because there is a situation that ain't going to well no time soon. And every time I, I, I say, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to take it on. And then when it happens, it's like, you feel like you get knocked down again. Like why God, I feel like I fell again, whether it's by deed or thought or verbal. And it's like, you know, God just lets you know that my grace is sufficient. And more importantly, hear this now, because even what people don't want to hear that God's children bothers God's children too. Like nobody is exempt from being used by Satan. Let's be clear. Like your brothers and sisters in Christ can be used to hurt you, manipulate you and abuse you just as much as you, you, yes, you can be used to abuse, hurt and manipulate other people. And a lot of people don't see it that way because they think they have some type of authority or power because they're a God's child. But you're not the only God's child out here. There's a lot of us and a lot of us fall short. A lot of us do wrong. A lot of us say things that are our mouths or deeds and thoughts that are not godly and not holy. This is why we have to kill the flesh daily. We have to die daily and get rid of all this filth and this junk and this mess. But guess what? Guess what? 
How can you go about doing that if you don't put time and effort into doing that? Hello, you have to spend time praying, reading, and fasting so that God can do something in you. Thank you. Whew, I'm just so full over here. I'm just trying to pour out my cup. So y'all get y'all cups. Get y'all little tea cups. Oh, Lord, I've been, my goodness, my goodness. I started all this morning, y'all. Um, well, early this afternoon. And I just thank God for the opportunity. But hear me out. You're free. There's no bonds. There's no chains. Like, no. His grace is sufficient. His love is endless. He doesn't change. He is still faithful. He is still loyal. He hasn't gone anywhere. He still loves you. He still cares. And he is your friend. Thank you, Jesus. He calls you friend. I don't think anybody understands like, the depths of that because this, this world has shamed and has thrown dirt on the word and the concept of friend, but true friend. A true friend sticks closer than a brother. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody is like Jesus. Nobody. Like some of us are walking around here. We got void, a, a void and gaps in us. And we're trying to fill it with all these different things. But I've been hearing this so much. I'm like, God, do you want me to change <laughs> my channel name? Or do you want me to start a new channel? But I just keep hearing just Jesus. Just Jesus. It ain't about the fancy car. It ain't about the fancy clothes. It ain't about who you, who's your friend, who's not. That perfect career. Just Jesus. Give me Jesus and leave the rest up to God. Just Jesus. Jesus is all you need in this crazy sick world. Jesus is all you need to go through your trial, your tribulation, your storm, whatever you want to call it. Jesus is all you need. Call out to him. Talk to him. Don't be a stranger. He calls you friend. You're already his brother and sister. So let's work on that relationship. Because how many know that even naturally some of us are in strange relationships or have a strange relationship between our brother and sisters? I can honestly say that my brother and sisters and us, like on my dad's side anyway, we're not as close as I would love to. And to me, it's even a little more distant since my daddy passed. But I had to pray about that and not to get down about that. But because God can do anything, first of all. And again, whatever void and whatever gap I got in me, I need to lean on to Jesus. I need to pull at his robe. I need to stay at his feet. I need to be pouring my little tears out and, and wiping his feet. And spend that quality time. Quality time, quiet time don't mean nothing if Jesus ain't there. If you ain't invite Jesus in, you have nothing. All you have is a bunch of crayons, coloring books, and Bibles, and books, and all this. That's all you have. That, this is, you can take all this. Give me Jesus. Jesus, meet me at the table, Lord. Meet me where I am, Lord, and help me. And help me to grow and mature in you so I can recognize you and so I can understand you and so that I can help somebody. I'm going to tell you something else while you're in this video, too, because I probably won't post a new, uh, well, Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Um, like I said, I've been praying and fasting about, should I go in ministry? My husband's already in ministry. And like I said, me, my conviction is women shouldn't be teaching men. And I know there are going to be men to come on my channel. You're not going to stop that, which I can still say I'm talking to the younger women. I can do that because the Bible tells me I can do that. But being a disciple and spreading the gospel is a ministry in itself. It doesn't need an extravagant title or a big business move or none of that. Like that's all that extra stuff. That's that man stuff that gives people glory and, and extra attention just for what kind of rank and stuff. Like there's work to be done and you don't need no title for that. Just know that if you're my brother and sister, we need to be helping one another. And I was sitting here thinking and I um, came up with the idea to my husband, I let him take over my live Bible study because he is a teacher. He is an ordained pastor. So he's a official teacher. And the Bible said, let the men teach, let the men preach so he can do that. And I don't feel no way about that. But what came to me, y'all, was um, I would like to reserve Tuesdays to kind of be like a study with me, like a real time study with me where I just sit here and go through my Bible and you go with me. And I'm not trying to teach you. You drop your little nuggets down below. I'm going to speak my two cents. We're going to pray about it. And we're just going to have a good time. And we're going to fellowship in the Lord. And I want to go live. I don't know yet. Um, I might just do record it because I don't know. 
um, our internet is satellite internet. So the more we pull and take, the less we'll have to do our real Bible studies where everybody's invited because my husband will be in control of that. And at first I was a little hesitant, but I had a sense of peace that everything's going to be okay. So I'm going to allow that to happen. But I ask that y'all still continue to pray for me and pray for my husband. And I absolutely love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.